All right, so this is a review of the FibTech CPR devices that are going in service today uh, on the Medics, uh, just the components and the use of the device itself. Uh, so it comes prepackaged. Uh, outer compartment here just has our instruction book uh, that can stay in there for review. Uh, and then you have the main compartment here uh, that opens up. Uh, in the top pouch here is the charging cord, uh, as well as the neck strap that we'll talk about once we actually get it on the patient. Get that out of the way. The next thing you have is the backboard piece. Uh, on the backboard piece you'll notice that it has uh, indicators for kind of the center of the chest. It doesn't matter as far as the head orientation on how it goes on the patient. The big things just that is the location that the piston is actually going to impact the chest. Uh, you have the carriage that goes over the patient. Uh, it's all one piece. Uh, it has release mechanisms on each side, the gray pieces. All you'll do is simply connect it onto the piece, push down and it locks into place. Uh, additionally, you have the actual motor portion of the, the piston. It's separate of the device itself. Um, we'll go over the buttons here in just a second. But as far as the actual application, this will go in perpendicular to uh, the carriage. Once it's seated, you can turn it either direction. Uh, it doesn't matter and it, it'll snap into place to twist it, to remove it, you actually have to apply downward pressure and then turn it. And that's how you actually release the device itself. The only other thing remaining in the bag, uh, and I'm not sure if it'll show up, but over here in the uh, round portion are additional pads for the chest piece itself. Uh, so that's the packaging of it. Uh, we'll kind of go over quickly the application on a patient. So if we were utilizing this in the field, obviously we'd start with doing chest compressions manually while this gets unpackaged and ready to go. From there we'll log roll the patient or however you need to move the patient to get the backboard in the right position. Uh, just remember where that picture is on the device. You want that basically wherever you want the piston to hit. So same spot as good CPR placement right in the middle of the sternum. The carriage will go over. We'll lock it into place. And then from here, we'll go over the buttons uh, so that you can see what we're doing. On the control hand it, it's, itself, power button. Uh, the one button adjusts the piston up and down. The two button has two different options. Uh, one is going to be continuous chest compressions. The other one actually does 30 to 2 chest compressions. Uh, so until we have our advanced airway in place, we can go 30 to 2. It'll give us an audible alert when it's going to stop so that we can give our two ventilations. Pulse button, uh, if we need to stop, maybe to analyze the rhythm or something like that. And then there's just some indicators over here as far as if it has some sort of an error. Uh, if the wrench illuminates, it's just that service is due, so on and so forth. Uh, also, it has battery indicator here as well. The battery is removable uh, here on the side. You can see the two black buttons. We push those, the battery comes out. You can actually check the battery status. Uh, by pushing and holding the indicator here on the bottom. They claim that the battery is actually a, a one hour run time, uh, so that's, that's their claim anyways. Uh, if for some reason the battery were to die or get very low, it will run off of our uh, power cord as well, so we have that option. So what we'll do when we actually get this on the patient uh, to, to turn it on, we push and hold power. The device will turn on. I'm going to hit the down uh, for the piston. It will go until it meets resistance, so just push and hold it and the device will stop itself once it meets resistance on the chest. And then from there we'll pick either the, the uh, 30 to 2 option or the continuous compression option. Uh, so setup is super easy, uh, nothing too, too fancy about it. When you're done, you can either manually retract the piston or if you push and hold power, the piston will retract itself. Uh, so to see it in application, again we'll push and hold power, the device turns on. Drop it in perpendicular, twist and turn, and then we'll just hit our down arrow on our piston, push and hold. It stops once it gets the resistance and the right pressure on the chest. We'll start it in the 30 to 2 mode, we hit play, and it'll start activating. You'll hear the indicator uh, come on here in just a second, but it's about to stop for us to provide ventilations. So there we stop, we do our two ventilations, and the machine takes off again automatically. Like I said, if for any reason we needed to pause, 
Uh, we'll just hit the pause button there. It keeps everything in check as far as the piston length and that type of stuff. Uh, and we can do whatever adjustments are necessary with the patient. The other thing that this has, um, the handles here are actually lifting handles. So if we have to actually move the patient or adjust them, uh, maybe we got a return of circulation and we're going to transport the patient now. We're going to keep the device on, obviously, and we can uh, adjust the patient and move them around with that. The final thing is the neck strap. Uh, the big thing here is just it provides a means to secure the device a little bit better uh, if we're going to move the patient around, um, and it's particularly if we're going to transport the patient, um, just to help keep everything in the right position. So what you end up having is an adjustable strap uh, on each end here. It has a little retention device that actually just clicks into the side of the CPR device. The strap will go behind the patient's neck. So again, we'll just clip this in. And then we can basically just tighten the strap up here on each side. And it'll tighten up behind their neck, come up over the top of the shoulders. And it's just to help prevent any motion up or down on the device as the patient gets moved, particularly if we were going up or down stairs or something along those lines. Um, as far as putting the device back in service when you're done, big thing's just going to be using our sandy cloths, wiping all the patient contact area, wipe off the patient pad, um, and then uh, making sure it's charged. The charger, the way it connects into the device itself, is a little bit fragile, so we're going to recommend not leaving it plugged in all the time. Just simply plug it in, get a full charge. It's a lithium battery, so it should hold its charge for quite a while. So in your morning checks, obviously just removing the battery, checking the battery level, make sure you're good to go if you need topped off or whatever, but not to keep it necessarily plugged in so that if we're in a hurry, we're not trying to yank this plug out quickly. We'd rather be uh, protected. Other than that, if you have any questions, let us know.